The Vietnam War was a bloody and devastating conflict, featuring the use of some of the most dangerous weapons, obliterating bombs and advanced tactics ever used in warfare. However, for the guerrilla soldiers of North Vietnam, known as the Viet Cong, the war presented an opportunity to innovate due to their lack of heavy artillery possessed by their adversaries. To make up for this lack of advanced weaponry, the Viet Cong devised simple traps out of naturally sourced materials such as bamboo, wood, and even live animals like snakes and scorpions. These traps formed one of the most formidable attack and defense systems ever used in warfare. Join us as we explore 10 most terrifying traps used in the Vietnam War. Number 10, Punji Stakes. The Vietnam War featured the use of some of the most cruel forms of trap ever explored in modern warfare. These traps, however simple, wrought the worst of damage to any soldier or civilian who falls victim to their trickery. One of such crude traps is the punji stake, or the punji stick. This simple spike is usually made out of wood or bamboo, cleverly crafted and hidden in the most clandestine way, which ensures that it delivers maximum damage. The Viet Cong often make these cheap but efficient booby traps from bamboo, well sharpened to obtain a pointy edge, then heated to make it hard. The punji stakes are then smeared with poisonous substances in order to deal additional damage to whoever steps on them. Sometimes the Viet Cong would coat these sticks with human or animal dung, this, coupled with the humid conditions of the Vietnam wilderness, causes the injuries sustained from exposure to these spikes to contract serious infections, which leads to the total decapacitation of any unlucky American soldier that falls into the trap. Sometimes the Viet Cong would hide these punji sticks in pits, dug along paths usually taken by the enemy. These pits are then perfectly camouflaged, covered with natural elements in order to make the trap look like any normal footpath. When an enemy soldier falls into the pit, the foot gets impaled on the stake, totally immobilizing the entire unit, as care must be taken when removing the stake from the leg in order not to cause more damage. Although the aim of the punji sticks was not to cause fatal damage, it worked efficiently in slowing down troops, causing gruesome injuries to soldiers and overall killing the morale of the troops. The Viet Cong placed these punji sticks along supply routes, patrol paths, and major footpaths taken by enemy forces. Sometimes, these simple traps can also play a vital role during an ambush. Vietnam soldiers preparing for an ambush would deploy these perfectly disguised instruments of pain. When enemy soldiers arrive at the ambush point, apart from the surprise element, the shocked soldiers would also be met with another surprise, finding themselves impaled on these painful punji stakes as they try to dive for cover. Apart from the physical damage caused by this simple yet deadly trap, the psychological torture took a higher toll on the troops. The Viet Cong were very good at playing these mind games, and the booby traps did more to defeat the spirits of the enemy troop than the guns and the bombs. Soldiers recount experiencing extreme paranoia, as they have to be very aware of their environment and are often terrified during patrols, scared of every step they take, because they don't know what could be hidden under the seemingly safe grounds. American soldiers had to undergo special training on how to avoid these booby traps, but many still fall victim. The punji stakes worked so well that, according to a report by the United States military in 1967, it was estimated that for every three weeks of combat, over 324 men had to be put in the hospital due to injuries sustained from these deadly traps. The Viet Cong, though outnumbered and outgunned, were able to turn even the ground that the enemy soldiers walked on into a weapon, using simple tools that could be easily crafted in no time. Another thing that made the punji sticks a major feature of the Vietnam War was the easy availability of the materials needed to build these traps. The Viet Cong could easily source for the bamboos used in making the traps, and so could easily set up their secret weapon in as many locations as they wanted. Number 9. Flag Bombs In warfare, capturing an enemy's flag is seen as a sign of total victory and is considered one of the highest achievements for a soldier. Capturing a flag is also used to mark the advancement of the troops, especially in areas that were previously under enemy control and are being recaptured. However, during the Vietnam War, capturing an enemy stronghold or military base carried a significant risk. While rejoicing over the lost territories that have been taken back or a captured enemy base, the celebrations often turn sour for American soldiers who end up triggering a booby trap as they try to remove the enemy flag. 
Oftentimes, when the Viet Cong realize that their controlled territory or military base is about to fall into the hands of enemy soldiers, they booby-trap the flag post. So when American soldiers try to bring down the flag, it triggers a perfectly hidden explosive, maiming everyone within the blast radius. These occurrences are often lethal, depending on the type of explosive used in the booby trap. But apart from the immediate damage caused by these traps, such an explosion results in extreme anxiety among troops. These soldiers, who may have previously been releasing pent-up tension and celebrating their newest victory in the war, are placed on high alert after such an unexpected blast. Tensions begin to rise, and fear grips everyone, because no one knows what else booby might be trapped in the camp. These fears are however not unfounded, as the Viet Cong are known to booby trap not just the flag, but also supplies as well. These spoils of war left by the fleeing Vietnamese soldiers, which may include guns and other ammunition, food and delicate intelligence, are often rigged with explosives, gas traps and other forms of tricky traps. The Viet Cong also sometimes booby trap any item believed to be souvenir worthy. During war, soldiers often take memorabilia from captured territories as a form of war trophy. However, these are also not so safe as they can be rigged with deadly traps, which either leads to instant decapacitation, life-threatening injuries, or instant death. Soldiers are trained to never put their guards down, even when it seems the battle has been won, because the Viet Cong are always full of surprises. Number 8. Snake Pits as part of the guerrilla tactics employed by the Viet Cong during the Vietnam War, these soldiers were able to successfully weaponize nature. According to reports by veterans, many who are still trying to heal from the psychological horror they witnessed during the war, the greater part of the damage done by the Vietnamese soldiers was not with guns. Although they used big bombs and big guns, the Viet Cong employed natural tools against the enemy, hiding brutal traps in plain sight, unseen by the enemy forces. Of the many, many traps used during the war, the snake pits stand out as particularly horrifying. Known to have an extensive knowledge of nature, the Viet Cong played on one of man's worst fears, snakes, making snake traps that would not just scare their victims, but sometimes take their lives. These snake pits can sometimes be up to eight feet deep, with edges specially made to ensure that whoever falls into it is not able to climb out easily. The pit is then filled with many venomous snakes and covered with leaves and sand so it looks like a normal pathway. When an unsuspecting enemy soldier steps on the surface, he finds himself tumbling down the hole. But the injury sustained by the fall is not the main goal of the trap. The fall triggers the hungry and angry snakes who promptly launch an attack on the enemy soldier. War veterans recount the horrors of watching their fellow warrior battling to get out of the snake-infested holes before sometimes losing consciousness. These snakes worked so effectively that they earned a huge reputation among American soldiers who refer to them as three-step snakes because three steps were all you could take after being bitten before the venom kills you. Apart from hiding these snakes in pits, Viet Cong guerrilla soldiers were also known to carry venomous bamboo pit vipers in their packs. When an enemy soldier tries to search through the pack, he immediately gets bitten by the venomous snake, a bite that is often lethal. During the war, these guerrilla tactics worked so well that United States soldiers had to undergo special training on how to detect and disarm these snake traps. Just like every other terrifying trap used during the Vietnam War, these snake pits also dealt a heavy blow on the mental health of the American soldiers, many of whom had to watch in horror and their friends and colleagues lose their lives to these traps. The psychological trauma that accompanied the experience followed many of these veterans, many years after the war had ended, serving as a testament to effectiveness of the guerrilla tactics of the Viet Cong. Number 7. Bouncing Betty The S-Mine, also known as the Bouncing Betty, is a special type of mine used by the Viet Cong against the American and South Vietnam forces during the Vietnam War. This powerful weapon works very differently from the usual mines and was known to deal a more deadly blow. The Bouncing Betty is a special type of mine, known as a bounding mine. What makes these mines special is that unlike other types of mine which typically detonate immediately they are disturbed, the Bouncing Betty launches to a certain height before detonation. This ensures that maximum damage is done to the torso and genitals, unlike other mines where most of the damage is absorbed by the soldier's legs. The Bouncing Betty was a very effective weapon during the Vietnam War, but just like every other trap on this list, it has a very simple setup. A steel cylinder measuring just 15 centimeters high and 10 centimeters wide makes up the main body. This cylinder is then filled with a black powder and a propellant at the base, which helps launch the mine. Around 360 steel balls 
rounds are placed around the end of the steel cylinder, which are effectively projected out by a central TNT explosive charge. Typically, a bouncing Betty weighs about 4 kilograms, and it requires a force of up to 7 kilograms to trigger it, so as to prevent it from being triggered by wild animals or other unintended circumstances. When an enemy soldier unknowingly steps on these mines, which were perfectly hidden under the ground, the bouncing Betty doesn't immediately spring into action, as it usually has a launch delay of 4 seconds. After the delay, the mine launches to a height of around 1 metro, then it explodes, spraying the steel balls towards anything or anyone within the blast radius. Although the obvious way to survive such a scenario would be to run away as fast as you can during the 4 second delay. However, this may not be a good idea, as the steel balls and shrapnel are lethal to anyone within a 20 meters radius. Beyond that, anyone within 140 meters of the blast radius may also suffer serious injuries, so running is definitely not an option. During the war, American and South Vietnam soldiers were trained to immediately dive to the ground face first, once a bouncing Betty has been activated, as this guaranteed a better chance of survival. Number 6 the cartridge trap. As a testament to the cruel ingenuity of the Viet Cong, these guerrilla soldiers were able to craft a new way to use discarded cartridges to cause extra damage to enemy soldiers. The cartridge trap is a very simple yet very effective booby trap, which is usually placed along supply paths, patrol routes, and points of planned ambush attacks. The aim of this trap is not fatality, but a distraction, or to serve as a deterrent for enemy troops from further exploring a particular region. These traps are often placed round military bases in order to discourage American and South Vietnamese soldiers from venturing into the bases. This dangerous trap is made up of four simple components, a piece of wood, a nail, a bamboo pipe, and a small arms cartridge. When a soldier steps on the trap, which is usually placed upright, the pressure exerted forces the bullet down onto the nail. This ignites the primer, causing the cartridge to fire. This trap was also known to be used during ambushes. As the round fires into the foot of the enemy soldier, the entire team is left in disarray and is promptly immobilized in order to tend to the wounds of the injured soldier. The northern Vietnamese soldiers can then descend on the vulnerable enemy soldiers. These surprise attacks catch the American or South Vietnamese soldiers unaware, and they are often easily defeated during such ambushes. These traps form an important part of the mind games played by the Viet Cong on enemy soldiers during the Vietnam War. Soldiers recount having to watch out for bullets, not just from the guns of their enemies, but from even the ground they walked on. According to reports by these brave veterans, in the Vietnam jungle, everything was a weapon, and you had to be extra, extra careful as there were booby traps in every corner. These traps are camouflaged so delicately, and most times, even those with the sharpest of eyes don't detect them until it is too late. As part of the efforts by the American military to combat the menace of the cartridge trap and other gruesome traps used by the Viet Cong, Special training was introduced for all soldiers fighting in the war. These trainings taught the brave warriors how to detect these perfectly disguised traps, defuse them, and even make them. Eventually, during the course of the war, the Americans and South Vietnam forces also used these traps against the Viet Cong, turning their own clever devices against them. Now it's time for today's subscriber's pick. The Vietnam War was a very brutal conflict, claiming the lives of thousands of soldiers on both sides. Apart from the military casualties, unlucky civilians also find themselves caught between the crossfire or fall into lethal traps set for the American or South Vietnam forces, collateral damages of an avoidable war. Things get even worse for captured soldiers, who have to face inhumane conditions in a territory where their basic human rights are far from being respected. Several war crimes are recorded to have been perpetrated by both the insurgent forces of North Vietnam and the American troops, especially captured soldiers. These prisoners of war are sometimes used to test out some of these innovative traps, losing life and limb in a senseless display of human depravity. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. Number 5. The Crossbow Trap The crossbow, an ancient weapon that earned a reputation for its deadly accuracy during war in ancient times, found a new configuration and use in the Vietnam War. The bow trap was an important part of the impressive guerrilla tactics used by the Viet Cong, and it worked effectively, causing great damage to enemy troops any time they came in contact with it. The Vietnam jungle formed a perfect hiding place for this deadly trap, owing to the low visibility and dense vegetation. This trap remains undetected until it is too late. These bow traps, however, have a downside. They take a while to build and are usually not as effective as other booby traps. This is why they were usually only used at the beginning of the war. 
The design of the bow trap was simple, featuring a straightened tree branch, a stick, and ropes. The rope is tied to the tree branch, forming the bow, and a sharpened stick is placed on the stand. The trap is then set up and tied to a tripwire. Sometimes the arrow is coated with poisonous plants or snake venoms in order to further incapacitate the soldiers who fall victim to the traps. The entire setup is then covered by leaves, perfectly blending into the jungle environment. As the enemy soldiers patrol the area, ignorant of the dangers that lurk within the wilderness, the tripwire gets triggered, usually by the boots of the unaware soldiers. As the tripwire is triggered, the arrow is subsequently released at high speed, sinking straight into the body of the soldier. Such cases can be particularly devastating to the United States troops, as multiple of these bow traps can be set up in the same area, leading to multiple injuries and sometimes fatalities. This bow trap stands as another testament to the ingenuity and cruel creativity employed by the Viet Cong guerrilla soldiers. However, what makes these traps more deadly is not just the physical damage they cause, but the psychological torture associated with anticipating a surprise attack from anywhere at any time. Simple patrols often end up in terrible situations that would sometimes require the urgent evacuation of the injured soldiers for medical treatment. Many years later, veterans still suffer from the horror they witnessed during the war. Number 4. Tunnel Traps Another important feature of the Vietnam War was the use of tunnels, dug by the Viet Cong guerrilla troops and stretching for tens of thousands of miles. This intricately designed tunnel system featured living quarters, supply rooms, underground military bases, hospitals, kitchens, factories, and important escape and attack routes. The tunnel systems were so vast that they even grew to a point where there were literally entire underground villages housing the insurgent army and civilians alike. The Viet Cong would often use these underground channels to transport important supplies, house their troops, and as command bases when the overground facilities pose significant risks. The claustrophobic design of the tunnels was intentional, targeted at the larger-built Western soldiers who often have a hard time trying to navigate through the tunnels. The Viet Cong tunnel system was so effective that, in 1966, when the United States and Australian troops tried to capture the Kuchi district, a very important tunnel system System used by the guerrilla soldiers, they were met with failure. After dropping lots of explosives on the area, trying to flush out enemy troops, many of the Viet Cong soldiers promptly disappeared into their well-camouflaged tunnel system, saving them from capture by the United States forces. The tunnels remained a safe haven until a year later when it fell to a larger and more extensive attack by the American troops in an operation known as Operation Cedar Falls. Apart from functioning as an underground shelter, these tunnels were also armed with booby traps and explosives that would be triggered upon being disturbed by invading enemy soldiers. Some of these traps included tripwires that would drop boxes containing deadly animals like scorpions and venomous snakes on the heads of the American and South Vietnamese soldiers as they tried to crawl into the tight tunnels. Grenade traps were also used in the tunnels, serving the double purpose of both maiming or killing the enemy soldiers and announcing their presence so the Viet Cong can be aware of where the enemy soldiers are trying to penetrate. In order to combat the menace of these tunnels, special tunnel rats usually soldiers with small stature, were trained in order to be able to safely navigate the cramped, tight tunnels. The special tunnel rats were also trained to effectively detect and disarm the booby traps laid by the Viet Cong. Number 3. The Mace Trap Famed as one of the worst booby traps used by the Viet Cong during the war, the mace trap was famed for having such a debilitating effect on the unlucky soldiers who falls victim. This crude trap consisted of a heavy metal, wooden, or clay ball armed with spikes made out of wood or bamboo. These spikes, just like many other traps used during the war, are smeared with snake venom or poisonous plant substance. Sometimes the Viet Cong also coat these spikes in human or animal dung in order to increase the chances of infection for the injuries caused by these spikes. The spiked ball is then hidden in the trees, waiting to be activated by a tripwire. Once triggered, the 40-pound spiked ball is released with a violent force, launching straight at anyone within the radius of its swing. The mace has the power to deliver a devastating impact to the upper torso of unsuspecting American soldiers, and sometimes the impact results in fatality. 
Many wars veterans recall being terrified of this mace trap, as it can literally spring out of nowhere, swinging like a pendulum, causing great injuries as it comes and goes. Soldiers who fall victim to the trap often have to be airlifted for medical attention, leading to delay in patrol, disruption to the logistics of the troops, and exposure to dangerous ambush opportunities. Beyond the big guns and the big bombs that served as a major part of the Vietnam War, the mace trap dealt such a heavy blow on the South Vietnam and American forces. Soldiers fighting in the war had to undergo special tactical training in order to learn how to detect, avoid, and disarm these mace traps. These guerrilla tactics helped the Viet Cong, who were often devoid of the heavy artillery available to the South Vietnam and American soldiers, wage a battle of the mind on their enemy troops, instilling fear and trepidation, psychological effects that followed many of the soldiers home after the war ended. Tell Six we need engineers. This pause is crawling with trap. Number two, Tiger Trap. Another menacing weapon similar in design to the Mace Trap was the Tiger Trap. This simple but terrifying trap was made up of a large board studded with metal or wooden spikes. The board is usually suspended above ground, waiting to impale any unlucky enemy soldier who disturbs the carefully hidden tripwire. What makes the tiger trap especially terrifying is the fact that the board is weighted with bricks and stones, ensuring that it falls with a great force, killing anyone below it. The tiger trap is fairly easy to set up, and the materials needed for its assembly can be easily sourced in the Vietnam jungle. This, coupled with the Viet Cong's exceptional knowledge of the landscape, helped the guerrilla insurgent forces to wreak unimaginable damage, both physical and psychological, on the American and South Vietnamese troops. The surprise element is what makes this trap even more effective, as soldiers on patrol are often oblivious of the dangers that lie above them, that is, until it is too late. Number 1. Grenade in a Can Last, but definitely not least on our list of terrifying traps used by the Viet Cong during the Vietnam War is a crude but effective trap known as Grenade in a Can. Yes, it is exactly the way it sounds, but don't be fooled by the simple setup. This trap has the power to deal a heavy blow on patrolling troops. The grenade in a can features a hand grenade with the pin removed to prime it. The armed grenade is then placed into a container and set up with trip wires along popularly trodden paths. When the trip wire is disturbed, the grenade is pulled out of the can and explodes. The effect of the blast, coupled with flying shrapnel, causes extensive damage to the unsuspecting patrol troops. These crude booby traps are strategically placed along routes known to be taken by American troops, or supply paths used by the South Vietnamese forces. The Viet Cong also placed these grenade traps near their military bases as a form of deterrent for enemy forces. The explosion quickly alerts the guerrilla soldiers of enemy activities along their baselines, triggering a quick defense that effectively pushes the enemy soldiers into a retreat. Ultimately, American forces learnt to use these clever tactics against the Viet Cong, leaving live grenades in discarded cans. The Viet Cong, known for their frugality, pick up these cans in order to build more traps, prompting an unexpected explosion. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.